One last thing before we close, because this is an important, I think, uh, uh, presentation for a lot of community oncologists, and that is the presentation of the B46 U.S. Oncology um, TC versus TAC trial. Joyce, you want to summarize that for us before yes, we end? Yes, the so-called ABC trials, three iterations of a study done over time and uh, collectively analyzed six cycles of TC versus an, an ACT or, or, or a tax AC, either dose-dense ACT or AC followed by weekly paclitaxel or TAC essentially. Um, in HER2 negative patients who are either node positive or high risk node negative, uh, showing stopped at the th um, uh, 344 events uh, for the interim analysis because um, did not hit the non inferiority boundary. In other words, it uh, was inferior. The uh, TC was inferior to the tax AC. And um, so uh, that's the overall results of the trial. The, um, Looking at hormone receptor status, nodal status subsets, you know, which were were prospectively uh, planned, but were still subsets that are certainly underpowered with regard to statistical significance. You see the benefit really in the triple negative patients. Um, only two two and a half percent in the node negative triple negatives in favor of anthracyclines, but increasingly large as you get up in your risk on triple negatives. And in the ER positives, the four or more nodes have a large benefit from anthracyclines. The, um, uh, the node negative ER positives, it goes in the other direction. There's no benefit at all. And the one to three, it's about two, two and a half percent. So frankly, it's data to the community to uh, decide what they're going to do with this. I think it's um, the, uh, the art of medicine once again. You know, we, it's not a one size fits all situation, I don't think. You know, I think that um, triple negative, um, well, we'll have to think very carefully, you know, about it. ER positive, higher risk, and in the one to three node positive, those with the probably more um, highly proliferative, in my opinion, grade three, more genomic, likely to be more genomically unstable is how I think of it, you know. But I think we're all going to have to look at the data. We'll have to get it published quickly. And it's just an important data set for the community. To see. I mean, is it going to change your practice? Yeah, um, no, I, I think um, we, I, <coughs> it sort of shows that there, there's likely less need for chemotherapy in a node negative ER positive patients. Do we need to give chemotherapy or not? Of course, that's on the genomic signatures. But if you're going to give chemotherapy in node negative, you probably don't need to give anthracyclines. I think it kind of justifies our clinical practice. The TC for node negative ER positive is a very reasonable option if you're going to select chemotherapy. Outside of that, anthracyclines and taxins remain the standard of care, and I think this confirms that. Yeah, I think it just reinforced what we were doing. Right, anyway. what we already do. Figure out the risk and then use more. Right. We unfortunately don't have time to talk about that because yeah. I think there's some incredibly important data about genomic risk, prospective data that was presented. But unfortunately, in the interest of time.